Welcome back. Today we're going to tie my new favorite uh, color combination for Kelly Gilmore's Sex Dungeon. Um, for the longest time, I couldn't find a tan variation that I was happy with. So I would have uh, just a straight tan, which I've caught fish on, I've done well with in the past. And then I've gone to like a tan body, brown head, vice versa. Um, just nothing that I was ever completely happy with or I really liked the way that it looked in the water and tan's one of my one of my go-to uh, color combinations um, or one of my go-to colors you know for streamers so after a little tinkering around with some colors and everything I finally settled on this one and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out and uh, so I'm going to go through that one I'm going to share this little uh, experiment um, with colors that I did with uh, Kelly's Dungeon. So uh, to start on this one, I'm gonna go with a size four for a back hook. So really I tie, for my personal patterns, um, what is way too tight there. For my personal patterns, there we go, that's better. I tie these basically, now the full size dungeon, I should say, not the minis. The minis are a standard four and six um, for the hook sizes. But for the bigger dungeons, I tie in three different sizes. So I'll use, on the smaller end, I'll use a two and a four. Um, on the bigger end, I'll use a one-aught and a two for a back hook. And then this one that I'm doing today is a size one and a size four. So when I get on the bigger spectrum, the bigger two of the combinations that I do, I jump up two hook sizes in between. For the smaller ones, I, I go just one hook size difference. So that's really the only thing on hooks that I do differently uh, for this pattern. But in, in all, um, if you count the many, there's four different sizes uh, four different hook combinations that I that I use. Now, you, if you really wanted to and you wanted to lengthen it out, I mean, you can go to a two odd up front, but I haven't tied any that big um, with any consistency, I should say. I've tied a couple on the bigger side. Um, just, I settled on those, those three as, as the ones that I'll go with. So to start on this, I'm just going with a cream uh, marabou plume. And then I'm going really light on the flash, so I'm going to take at most two strands. At most two strands, I'm going to double it over. And we're going to, yeah, I'll go with that. Actually, no, I'm going to take one out. I'm just going to go with three strands on each side. I'm going to run that down the side here for some internal flash. Get that secure, double it over, and Cameron's gonna require a lot of attention in this video. <laughs> you poor thing, you lack attention, don't you? All right, so there we go. So that gives me a total of six strands of flash throughout, and uh, you can see it's pretty well distributed. Now to go on top of this, this is gonna be the toner color. This is what's gonna give me the tan and brown mix that I really like. Um, from here, I'm just gonna sort through these. And I got my personal phone ringing and all sorts of stuff here. So I'm just gonna sort through these. That looks like it's gonna be a really good overwing, so I'm gonna use it for that. Um, and this is just a Bard MFC, tan and brown. Um, this is the um, favorite of mine on the Miss October. Um, between that and the gray and white, it's in between the two. Um, this, this one's probably my favorite uh, color combination to use on the October. Uh, I got a couple fibers there that are busted up. There we go. There we go. So now I'm just gonna set this over for the toner and get that set in right like that. This top one's gonna be just slightly longer 
than the cream. I mean, just slightly, a quarter of an inch at most. And then before I advance to the front, you can see that little toner that we have on the tail there. I didn't really wet that one down so it's kind of flying around a little bit. Before we go to the front, I'm going to take some brassy sized gold wire. This is going to be the counter wrap for our hackle. I'm going to set that in, like I said, before I advance that marabou to the front, I'm just going to set that like that and then get this tied in. So then we'll go one, two, three, and give me a couple more wraps there. It was a little on the long side. Double that wire over and then capture it on this side. That's nice and secure for you. It's not going anywhere. We'll set that off to the side and then form a dubbing loop. Now on the loop, we're just gonna secure that in place, throw our tool in, and then now we can finally work the rest of this marabou to the front. So our marabou tail's good and secure. Everything's nice and clean there. Take that to the front, leave yourself a little bit of room. You got some legs and an overwing to put in there. After the hackle's in place, so I got myself about an eighth of an inch before the eye of the hook. Set that cream off to the side. <clears throat> Uh, some dust in here, my contacts are drying up. All right, for the body, I knew I had it here somewhere. We're gonna use a UV tan, and then just want a very slight taper. I'm gonna kick that off to the side because we're gonna use it again for the front. So just a real slight taper on this. And I didn't half hitch. Or did I? Nope. Didn't half hitch. So we'll secure that into place. And then get our body material in here. Go ahead and spin that up in your dubbing loop. I'm going to get a second spin on there to tighten that up slightly. There we go. Get out of there. Starting at the very back there and then just making some nice consistent wraps all the way up to the front. I'm not real heavy on that on that ice dub. Um, I like to keep that body pretty slender. So I stay pretty Pretty light on the ice stuff, but I don't want to go getting too awful bulky in that. So now for our hackle here, we're going to go with a Grizzly variant. This is a tan. Um, it's got some browns. It's got some blacks. Just a really nice color breakup in that. I try to search for something a little bit on the lighter side when I do these. Cameron, relax. Hey. Really? Come on, get down. Get. We're gonna go outside. Relax. My goodness. Never a dull moment with her. Yeah, there you go. Play with Maddie. All right, so. There's one. I'm just going to pick that other one out. Like I was saying before Cam decided my attention was better spent with her. Um, I like to try and find something a little bit on the lighter side. Um, you can see some of these have a pretty dark or really pronounced black uh, streak to them. I try and stay away from them. I'll use them on occasion just to break things up slightly. Um, but for the most part, I try and find them a little bit on the lighter side. So this one's got a little bit more brown toward the back than it does the, the black. Um, I'm just going to get that secured into place and then double over that stem because it's pretty flimsy. Just capture that. Right like so. 
and then we'll give that a quick hitch. Oh, where's my hackle pliers at? There we go. Just take that right to the back. Nice, consistent, even wraps. And you can see that one's up coming through more of a brown than it does the tan. But up toward the tips, you get the little tan uh, um, highlights and everything. Just a really nice color breakup, in my opinion. And then you obviously have the tan UV underneath, um, which gives it that sculpt and body like appearance. So. Get that out of the way, get the remainder of our hackle out, and then I'm going to find this one that I said was a good overwing. Set this in before I do that. I got to put my legs in, I almost jumped ahead of myself. There's two for the back, three for the front. Set those there. Get that off to the side, everything's moving along as planned. No major mess ups here so far, which I've been notorious for the last couple of videos. So this is just a gold, amber, and black that I use for the tail. Spin my thread there real quick. And then just take this right through, get a figure eight on the top of that work that back just slightly and then one two pull down tight and that locks that those uh, legs into place for you so I'm going to leave that as it sits for now and then I want to take this marabou overwing section and set that right here and so that it runs back into the tail portion, about a quarter of the way back the tail. One, two, get a third secure wrap. I'm gonna go right in front of the eye of the hook. Spin this around. And then just trim that off. So there we have that. I'm gonna clean this up slightly. A little close to the eye on that. Just got a little bit of fuzz sitting there from the marabou, but we'll be all right. So go ahead and whip finish this. And then our front hook, or our back hook, is complete. I'm just going to take and trim these legs right now. Just give them a quick trim like so. Grab a tan marker, brown marker, olive, whatever you want to do, just touch that up. I'll just touch it up on the top side. Alright, so now we can go with our connecting wire and then I'm going to go with two six-aught beads. I'm going to use some blue for this one. Not that the bead color really matters because we're going to cover it up with the skirt. But I decided to go with blue. Alright, so we'll set that in there, pull that tight, and grab our two beads. There's one. are so beat up from working on the shop out there. Tough to get a good grip on some stuff here at times. So now we're going to go with our size one and we're going to get a thread base down. Get that 
base the whole way back, one wrap all the way through, and then I'm just going to kind of open loop that. Tighter open loop wraps than, than normal, just to get a little bit of extra thread down there for our wire to bite into. So I'm going to stop that about a quarter of an inch back from the eye of the hook. I'm going to back that off one more actually. And then I'm tying in some MFC um, blue sparkle eyes. These are a large um, for this one and the size two and one aught. I'll use large eyes for the um, four and the two. I'll go with mediums. This one obviously a large and then for for the minis I go with the small. So I'm just going to take and hit this with a little bit of zap which is locked up tight. I'll just go with the Gorilla Glue. Maybe. So Gorilla Glue has this stuff out now where it has the paintable brush on it. And I started going into that because it's a little bit cheaper than some of the stuff on the market. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's super glue. Same thing as that. Essentially the same chemical makeup. So this saves a little bit of money. And I like that it has that brush applicator on it. It gives you a lot more control than just throwing a dab on. Plus you lose a lot less or you waste a lot less, I should say. So there we go, we've got our eyes secured into place. We're gonna advance our thread to the back. Set that right there, make sure that the eyes are on there properly. Everything's looking pretty good. So now I wanna take this and set that on. Not any tight wraps at this point, I just want that nice and secure. Now you can see how that's setting right there. It's a little bit on the long side, so I just want to pull that in slightly, secure that, and then bring a wrap around, tighten that up, and then work this to the front so we can double over our wire and move on to the skirt. Set that right there. And before I go any further, oh, uh, where did I put it? Hmm. I'm looking for my straw here because I know those legs are going to fight me, and I just want to wrap that with the straw, but. It doesn't look like I'm going to be able to find it, so... Oh, there we go, we got it back up. There we go, we got it back up, it's beat the hill. So I'm just going to take that straw, cut it in half, throw that over the top. That way those legs aren't going to, aren't going to fight me. And I'm not going to be catching them with my, with my thread and everything. Now back to double one over our wire, taking that back. Same thing from here, just taking that one back. Now we're ready to build the skirt section of this fly. Now for the skirt on the first section, I'm just gonna take pieces from the discarded marabou that I used for the last overwing. And I'm just gonna take a section right like that, pull that off the stem, come up to the top a little bit, bust that off to where it's nice and flush there. And then I'm just going to lay that down the side to where it's giving me some coverage over my beads and over the eye of the rear hook. Now I'm going to take that right about to where I doubled over that wire. And then 
then I'm just going to trim that. That's going to give me a little bit of a transition there. Give me a little bit of a taper. What's the matter, Cam? You're all right. Same thing on the opposite side. Same thing. Right there, we're going to set that into place. Measure that out with the other side. Make sure that we're nice and even. And then secure that in. Right like so. Everything's looking good there. We're going to get another overwing. We're going to take this one and it's going to run back into our last one. So with the straw on there, it can be a little bit difficult to gauge how far back you want that to go. This color may be slightly lighter than what I want it to be, but I think we'll let it, we'll let it go. So I just want to go back into, if you want a good gauge for this, you want to go back about a quarter of the way of your overwing. So it's a little, like I said, a little tough to gauge with the straw right there, but you can see that section, if I can get my fingers out of the way enough, we're going back into um, about a half inch back from the eye of the hook on that rear hook. About a half inch back is a pretty good gauge. If you want to at this point, you could take the straw off and give a look at your distances and everything and make sure that they're how you want them. Um, I'm just going to leave those on, but for, for when you're doing your first couple of them, if, if, you're, if you're unsure about your distances and everything, just peel the straw off, give it a look, and you'll be able to see it once we take the straw off on, uh, once we get closer to the end of the fly, but you'll be able to see the distance that you're looking for on that uh, connection there. So now I'll take that one up right in front of the eyes, secure that into place, bring that back, and then we're gonna tie in our rib material again for our counter wrap. A couple of good wraps right there, roll that back, Double it over and secure that into place. Once again, go ahead with a half or with a uh, dubbing loop. Get ready for your ice dub here. Throw that in. Get that off to the side. Get a quick half hitch. And then bring that around. So. Like I was saying, back to our ice tub, which I left over here. Grab your ice tub. There's a couple of bulky spots in there that were a little bit twisted up and tangled, so I'm just going to remove them, grab a little bit more, and then get that in and spin this up again. Like I said on the first one, I tend to stay pretty sparse on this ice tub. So there we go, just shift that around a little bit, get that where we want it, making sure that that first wrap is giving you good coverage and you're not going to miss a spot uh, between your body and your skirt. So I'm staying a little bit behind the eyes on this one. I'm going to trim that off, get this out of the way. We're done with that for now. And then we're going to, or we're done with that for the video. And then we're going to go into our hackle again. So this is, like I said, just a grizzly variant tan schloppen from uh, Nature Spirit. We'll get that secured. Try and catch that on the underneath side. There we go. Get that secured. And then we're going to go back to our hackle pliers. And we're really getting close to doing some work on the deer hair. So that's a little 
little bit on the long side, but I'd rather have it on the long side than I would the short. So we're going to go with that. I actually like the length of that pretty good. So now to counter wrap this, I got one piece that I need to untangle there. Counter wrap, I'm a little bit on the short side for my wire, so I'm going to have to. I may have to go with the hackle plier. No, that will be good. Will be good. So just ripping that right through. That's a little short on the wire there, so my hand probably covered up a decent amount of that. But overall, I think we got the gist of it out. Now again, we're just gonna trim that off. Get rid of that tag end. And then at this point, now well, I'll just keep that on there for now. All right, so there's our slopping. It's all set into place. I'm gonna grab my rubber legs. I set a three for the front on this one. We're gonna drop that in. Same thing, figure eight over the top. One loose wrap in the front, pick this up, grab that X, put it wherever you want it, making sure that your legs are hanging straight down for you. Another loose wrap and then just pull down tight and that gel spun goes into the rubber legs and it sets them right where you want them. So now we need one more overwing. I'm gonna try and find a really good one here, something that's really kind of bulky. If I have to, I'll double it up, which I'm probably going to wind up doing. Uh, those two right there, I think, are going to work. I'm going to use those two. So on these two, you can see one of them has a little bit webby, more webby of a property to it, and the other one's kind of streamlined. I'm going to put the webby one down first, um, just to give me some fill and to give me some extra bulk. The color on the other one is a little bit more consistent, so just for from my perspective, or from, from me looking at it, I want the, the more vibrant color on the top, and that's just for the fly tire. That's not for the fish by any means. So once again, we're running this back into the last one that we tied in for consistency purposes, the same length all the way back, or the same distance back into the last feather that you tied in. So we'll just set that in there. We'll get that secured, get that trimmed and out of the way. And then we're going to go with our little, with our one that's a little bit more streamlined. Um, not as many um, webby feathers on this one. So we're just going to set this in. This is going to give us a little bit of extra bulk. Um, and like I said before, it the colors are a little bit more vibrant, so it looks better to the tire. Now we'll get that in there, trim that off, and then I'm going to steal this straw from the back section. I'm not going to cut my legs off just yet. I'm going to leave those right how they sit. And then I'm going to take that straw, peel everything back, and throw that on. That way I'm free and clear to tie this deer hair in. Almost. Almost. I have a couple pieces of schlopping sticking out there, so we'll just throw that on and then rotate that around. And then we're good right there. So now at this point, I would typically jump over to my gel spun 200. Um, I got a different thread on that spool, so I'm going to stay with the 100. So, for the head on this one, you've got to see me do this on a couple of different patterns uh, to where I make uh, a multicolored deer hair head to where I kind of just sprinkle in some different colors, uh, mix, the, mix the two up. I'm not going to go with a cream underneath section. I'm just doing this one uh, tan and brown or a natural and brown. Um, if you want to get closer to the, the um, 
the dye bath that you'll get in the marabou and everything, you can go with a tan um, deer belly hair. It'll get you a little bit closer to it, but typically I don't like to mix belly and body hair, so I'm just gonna go with the, with the brown and uh, natural for this. So I'm gonna take two sections of this, and this is gonna be strictly a pectoral fin. That's all it's gonna be. So I'm just mixing these two up. I'm bringing these two together and I'm just shuffling them like a deck of cards, getting those two in um, to where they're pretty consistently mixed. That looks pretty good right there. And then because the brown tends to take over um, color wise, I, I typically go a little heavier with the brown than I do the tan. Um, I'll typically go a little heavier with the tan. So those two are mixed up, everything looks good right there. I want to take this back. Get a good bite on that. I want to take this back to where the tips are running between the point and the barb of the hook. And then I'm just going to cut that off square. Set that right behind my eyes. And then we're going to go one two and the third we're really going to secure that down into place press that down with your thumb right like so all right there are collars sitting in really nice you can see from the underneath side we don't have any travel going on the underside of it just a nice half moon collar on the top so now i'm going to pick out the next three sections that i'm going to use for this and I'm going to set them off on the comb. That way I don't have to go back and forth between the hide and the and tying. That and I can kind of get a gauge when they're on the when they're on the comb like that. I can get a gauge as to you know the thickest one that I'm using. I want to put that obviously in the front but uh, in front of the eyes. The heavier or the middle of the two. I'm going to put on the top and then the lightest of the three I want to put on the bottom behind the eyes. So just like that we're going to get these three out, one, two, and three. We're going to set those in, we're going to get three of the brown, we're going to set those on top and then as it's time to move forward on that, or as it's time to start tying, like I said, I got a visual representation right there of my thickest ones. So, back to the brown. And like I said, the brown's going to typically overtake your tan, so go a little bit lighter on the brown. Unless you want that heavy brown with just the real spotted tan in it. Um, after you tie a couple, you'll look at them and Make some adjustments as to what you like, what you don't, and then, um, like I said, just just adjust on the fly from there. So that's a little heavy on the brown. I'm gonna take a couple pinches out, set that in with my middle section, and then this one's gonna be, this one here on the back is gonna be my heavy one for the front. I'm gonna grab a little bit extra. Clean this up real quick. Set that right there. So now, starting with my one that is what, what I refer to it as the the middle one, I would guess, the one that's uh, not the heaviest but not the most sparse. Whatever better adjective you can come up for with that, then, then me go ahead and use that. So, once again, just shuffling them up. Um, 
I'm going to take and just tap these from the butt section in my hand right like that just to kind of even things up slightly. I'm not throwing them in the stacker and doing all that, but I want to make sure that I at least tap them a little bit to kind of even those butts up slightly. And then I'm going to take and just trim off the tips. We're not going to be needing them at all. And then there's a couple shorts in there, so I'm going to grab it from the other end, from the butt end. I'm going to peel them shorts out and then set this right in the top. So right on the top there. There we go. One, two, pull that down. I'm using 100, so I'm not pulling down real tight on that. Now we're gonna go with our most sparse piece or our most sparse bundle of deer hair. Just mix those up. Mix those up by hand. Sometimes on these bottom ones, I will go with a little bit more tan. Like I'll try and actually pick through some of that brown just to give me a little bit more to match the underneath from the rest of the body and everything. Um, that way the tan comes through a little bit more, but that's me really nitpicking and, you know, probably getting a little too far into the weeds on the color combination that I need to be. So, right through that on the bottom, just secure that into place. Three good wraps and then anchor it in. Then I'm gonna peel this hair back. Get a wrap around my eyes and then find the midway point. I got a couple of rogue hairs up there in the front. Find the midway point between the eye and the lead eyes sparkle eyes, whatever. And then we're gonna mix up our last section here. Just mixing this up by hand, getting everything how we want it. And then once again, just kind of tap that, even everything out. We're gonna cut the tips off once again. Get those out of our way. We're working with the most hollow portion of the deer hair. Get the shorts out once again. And you can already see like in my hand how that brown's kind of overtaken the the rest of the the rest of the tan on that. And then we're gonna go one, two, a third, and I just want to walk that around right in front of the eyes and get a good spin there. Right like that. And you can see that I don't have this so compact that it's gonna be like a popper in the water. I mean, there's, I'm still gonna be able, water's still gonna be able to get into these individual fibers, but I'm still gonna be able to form and shape the head how I want it. So there we go, right in front of the eyes. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go, that's nice and clear. All of our deer hair is set into place. We get rid of the scissors momentarily, get this out of the way. And then I'm gonna find a new razor blade here. Set that up. I'm gonna grab this comb real quick and just kind of dress this up. Just free up any fibers that are kind of twisted up or tangled or anything. Just kind of matted down, makes it a little bit easier to trim this. Then we're gonna start on the bottom. Make sure that you're looking at the eye of your hook and it is in fact flush with the bottom and then we're just going to take a nice clean cut right through there till we start to find the eyes and I want to be just above the eyes like 
to where they're barely starting to be visible coming through on that bottom, if you can see that there. You don't want to nick your eyes up with the razor blade. You'll get one fly out and that'll be the end of that blade and you got to swap it out. So, we're just going to continue to trim that up right down through there. And this isn't a rounded portion, it's a flat section on the dungeon to represent that sculpin that has that flat wide head. A lot of the stuff that you'll see out there, some of the commercial stuff, a lot of the stuff that you'll see online when they're tying the dungeon, it has a rounded head to it. Cameron, you got deer hair all over you. Give me five minutes and I'll be done, all right? Come on. Hey, knock it off. Come on, five minutes. Oh goodness, she loves her attention, that's for sure. Anyhow, like I was saying, you're not gonna, you don't want that rounded bottom portion. A lot of the stuff that you'll see online or commercial stuff um, has that rounded body or rounded bottom section, and that's not really what you're after on these. Um, Kelly, when Kelly designed it, he designed it after a sculpting head. Like I said, it's flat and wide. So now we'll peel this up. Go right through here and just take that right to the back, right to where we start meeting our collar. Trim some of those hairs out. I got some on this side that I want to get rid of as well. I'll do some work with the scissors on the rest of that. But that gives me the overall shape right there of the body or of the head that I'm looking for. And then I want to take this out of the vise, face it away from me, and I'm going to trim a little wedge into that front section. So I'm just taking a little bit of this out, setting that in, and I'm getting that wedge section that I want. Look at it from the underneath side, mirror this side to the other. Just a nice quick trim right there but not taking so much at a time to where you're cutting half of your head off. There we go, we've got, you can see from that underneath side, we have that really nice sculpting effect to it. And then with the pectoral fins up here and on the side, a really nice sculpting imitation or profile. So now I've got some stuff up here to trim up. missed a chunk of it with the razor blade so I'm just going to take and trim up those stray hairs right there and I want to be able to see my eyes so I'm going to trim around those to where my eyes come out and they pop same thing on this side I want to see the eyes there we go you can see the eye right there see the eye on that side now we're going to peel off the straw Now we're going to peel off the straw, yeah, second time it worked, and find our legs. We're going to drop those down, get those pretty fairly consistent for us, right like so, trim them, and we are good to go. I still have a little bit more work to do on the hair, but I told Cameron no more than five minutes, so I'm going to make sure I uphold my end there. There you can see a couple of the hairs that we need to fix right there i want to peel that back a little bit but that is like i said one of my new favorite um dungeon color combinations sometimes with the i, I like to try and get it as close to as possible with the dye bath throughout um, this winter i'll be working on some uh some different deer hair dyes and uh, see if I can't get something a little bit closer to the, to the MFC color. Uh, it'll really bring that fly together, I think, but I've had a lot of success with this color combination. 
uh, in the past. But if I wind up getting that dialed in, I'll probably have that on the website for sale and everything, and we'll go from there depending on how close I can get it. I'll have to tweak some stuff and figure some stuff out, but uh, it'll be a good winter uh, science project for me. But as always, guys, questions or comments, leave them with me. I'll get back to you. Cameron's back in her normal spot here, so that's my cue to shut this thing down. Thanks as always. We'll catch you next Wednesday.